London, a city built beside a great river, the Thames a majestic beast provider of life and occasionally a bit of a troublemaker. You see, the Thames has a habit of flooding. Not just a little splash, mind you, but a full-blown evacuate the Tower of London kind of flood. Historically, these floods were seen as acts of God, which is a bit unfair, really, because it's not like God was down there with a giant hose pipe. It was physics, plain and simple. The North Sea, feeling a bit boisterous, would surge up the Thames, causing havoc. By the 20th century, Londoners had had enough. The 1953 flood was this last straw. It was time for a solution, something grand, something innovative, something to tell the North Sea, all right, mate, you've had your fun. Thus, the idea of the Thames barrier was born. Building a barrier across a river like the Thames is no mean feat. It's a bit like trying to wrestle a whale while balancing on a rubber dinghy. But Londoners are nothing if not ambitious. Construction began in 1974, a testament to British engineering and, dare I say, a touch of madness. Over eight years, thousands of workers toiled tirelessly. They dredged the riverbed, poured concrete, and wrestled massive steel gates into place. Imagine the logistics tea breaks for thousands, the constant threat of drizzle and the inevitable seagull pinching someone's lunch. Finally, in 1982, the Thames barrier was complete. A marvel of modern engineering, it stood ready to protect London from the watery wrath of the North Sea. Now, how does this behemoth actually work? Imagine a giant set of Lego, only instead of being bright yellow and red, these blocks are gleaming silver and weigh thousands of tons. These are the barrier's gates, each rotating on a massive pivot. When the tide is behaving itself, the gates lie flat on the riverbed, allowing ships to pass unhindered. But when the North Sea gets its knickers in a twist and a surge tide threatens, the gates swing up. It's a slow, graceful movement, like a mechanical ballet. These gates, combined with a series of embankments and flood walls, act like a giant dam, holding back the tide and protecting London from a watery invasion. It's a testament to human ingenuity, a mechanical marvel, and a rather effective way to keep London's feet dry. Still standing strong, the Thames Barrier today. Fast forward to today and the Thames Barrier is still going strong. It has been called upon over 200 times to protect London, saving countless homes and businesses from flooding. And it's not just about protection, the barrier has become a London icon. Tourists flock to see its gleaming gates, marvelling at its scale and ingenuity. It's even been featured in films, standing sentinel against fictional floods and alien invasions. Who knew a giant floodgate could be so photogenic? But the Thames Barrier is more than just a tourist attraction or a movie star. It is a vital piece of infrastructure, a testament to human ingenuity and a reminder that even the mightiest rivers can be tamed. It is London's guardian standing watch over the city, ensuring its safety for generations to come. Fun facts and fishy tales, anecdotes from the Thames. Now, what would a tale about the Thames Barrier be without a few fun facts and fishy tales? Did you know that each of the barrier's gates is as high as a five-storey building and weighs as much as 3,000 double-decker buses? That's a lot of buses. Then there's the story, perhaps apocryphal, but who are we to spoil a good story, of the chap who, during a particularly high tide, decided to go for a swim in the Thames just upstream of the barrier. He apparently wanted to see if he could surf the wave as the barrier closed. Needless to say, the authorities were not amused, and he was swiftly fished out, soaking wet and thoroughly chastised. The Thames Barrier, a marvel of engineering, a London icon, and a constant source of fascination and amusement. It's a reminder that even in a city as ancient and storied as London, there's always room for a bit of modern-day wonder.